a very warm welcome uh, this Christmas Day to you, to our Christmas Day morning service. It's lovely to be worshipping with you this morning and a very warm welcome to everybody who is watching at home. Because it's Christmas Day and we're not allowed to sing congregationally, I'm hoping to, planning to include every so often um, some verses from carols and as I do so I just ask you to listen but not sing along in line with our current restrictions and similarly with the responses you can if you say them in your hearts but not we won't be responding out loud congregation and when it comes to communion I'll explain how we'll do that when we get to it. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And a verse from a carol for us to Listen to once in royal David City stood a lonely cattle shed where a mother laid her baby in a manger for his birth. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed. Through negligence, through weakness, for our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us your only begotten Son to take our nature upon him, and as at this time to be born 
of a pure virgin. Grant that we who have been born again are made your children by adoption and grace. May daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Well, now I'm going to invite Harry and Oscar to come and light all four of our Advent candles and the Christmas candle in the middle. Now there's a taper at the bottom of the stand okay, yeah. and you can light it from the candle. Ooh. Which one are you going to go for? Well done, didn't Harry and Oscar do well? Let's give Harry and Oscar a little round of applause. Right? Super candle lighting. Well done. And we're going to have a prayer to accompany the lighting of the candles. God our Father, today the Saviour is born, and those who live in darkness are seeing a great light. Help us who greet the birth of Christ with joy to live in the light of your Son, to share the good news of your love. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who has come into the world. Amen. And now a reading from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 14. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, 
a Saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favour rests. Heavenly Father, we pray this morning that you would speak to us through your word, and gladden our hearts with the joy of the good news of Christ. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, today we are celebrating the wonderful and glorious good news of the birth of our Saviour. Tidings which are of great joy and lift our hearts. And this is a most unusual Christmas and one in which we do need our hearts and spirits lifted. It's been a strange year in which our services are not taking their usual form. We've been doing things online where many of us have our travel plans disrupted, and where we can't see the family and friends that we normally would. I know for many today is the, the only day when they can see relatives and I have uh, many family members, as I'm sure we may do, who aren't allowed to see anybody at all. I think it's in times like these that we most need to hear the wonderful good news of Christmas. And part of that good news is that Jesus, our Saviour, is born into this world with all its troubles and challenges and complexities. And he's not immune from the disappointments and frustrations of life, but, but he fully enters in and involves himself with the difficulties that we face. He understands. And in fact, from the first few verses of our reading, we see the world in which Jesus is born. It's one in which journeys are difficult. We might think of Mary travelling all that way to Bethlehem while so very pregnant, great with child, and then arriving to find that the accommodation that was expected isn't available. There's no room at the inn. And then having to give birth where the cattle are kept and place the baby in a manger. A Christmas God becomes flesh and yet chooses to suffer all the poverty and hardship and indignity of life so that he stands in our shoes. But the real good news of Christmas is not simply that our Saviour is born and understands our difficulties, but that this is the opening and beginning of God's wonderful rescue mission. This child is born to put us right with God that he will grow up to die on the cross in our place instead of us. That not only does heaven come down to earth, but though the way back to heaven from earth is opened to us. And because Jesus has been born as our saviour and lived a perfect life of obedience and died in our place for us on the cross, because of that, we who trust in him can know the peace and joy and grace and love of God 
that he offers freely to all who believe and trust in Jesus. What wonderful good news of comfort and joy we can find in knowing our Saviour is born for us and that we can be friends with God once again. Well, with that good news in mind, I'm going to say the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now a verse from a little town of Bethlehem. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in my dark street shineth Let us pray to Jesus our Saviour. Christ born in a stable, give courage to all who are homeless. Christ for whom the angels sang, give the song of the kingdom to all who weep. Christ worshipped by the shepherds, give peace on earth to all who are oppressed. Christ before whom the wise men knelt, give humility and wisdom to all who govern. Christ whose radiance filled a lowly maiden. Give the glory of your resurrection 
to all who rest in you. Jesus, Saviour, Child of Mary, you know us and love us. You share our lives and hear our prayer. Glory to you for ever. Amen. The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children, and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take it, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him, his body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the heart. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave to you his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, 
and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to this, your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. In a moment, I'll invite you to come forward to receive communion if you would like to. And for that, we'll walk down the centre aisle in a socially distanced way. I will then give out the, the wafer and then we'll go down the side aisles to return to our pews where that's possible. And we won't be giving out the wine and I'm afraid we won't be giving out any blessings this morning. Do come forward to receive um, the bread if you would like to. God, our Father, whose word has come among us in the holy child of Bethlehem, may the light of faith illumine our hearts and shine in our words and deeds through him who is Christ the Lord. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And the verse of my favourite carol. is God rest ye merry. God rest you merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay, for Jesus Christ our Saviour was born upon this day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. O tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. O tidings of comfort and joy. May the joy of the angels the eagerness of the shepherds, perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest on each one of you now and always. Amen. And a very happy Christmas to you all.